Hey folks, and welcome to another video from A Plain Truth. Uh, pope Francis, the first Jesuit pope in 600 years, comes from Argentina. And boy, he's created a lot of mess in the Vatican and the church. We see all the boys that were molested over 40 years, 857 paperwork from Pennsylvania about the molestation by priest. We see down in uh, down in uh, Chile where all the archbishops resigned, all the priests resigned from the Catholic Church to protest pedophilia. And Pope Francis basically said, hey, it's not such a big deal. Uh, but let's get into this a little more. I'm going to go a little bit backwards on this <clears throat> before I play the tape. Uh, in the 1970s, Father Jorge Bergoglio faced a moment of truth. Would he stand up to Argentina's military neo-Nazis that are disappearing thousands, including priests, or keep his mouth shut to protect his, uh, his career? Like many church leaders, Francis took the safe route, Robert Perry reports. The election of Argentine Cardinal Jorge Borgoglio as Pope Francis brings back into focus the troubling role of the Catholic hierarchy in blessing much of the brutal repression that swept Latin America in the 70s and the 80s, killing and torturing tens of thousands of people, including nuns accused of sympathizing with leftists, and they made him a pope. All right, so his projection, he'll hear in, the, in this video, quote, his flame donning his own son, may, I say to you, O Lucifer, who knows no setting, Christ is your son who came back from the dead and shed his light to the human race and is alive and reigns forever and ever. He really said this. So this is the video I'm going to play here. According to Pope Francis and the church, the morning star is the creator of the world and the father of Christ. He brought light to the human race. Pope Francis declares Lucifer as God. Pope Francis and the Vatican has introduced the world to their God. They have been worshiping all along Lucifer. According to Pope Francis, according to Pope Francis and the Catholic Church, the Morning Star is the creator of the world and the father of Christ. He brought light to the human race. This announced announcement was made to the world April 27, 2014, during a ceremony where Pope John Paul I and Pope John Paul II uh, this, this declaration is unprecedented and should cause concern to the world. It is no coincidence that the first Jesuit pope would make such a shocking statement. He has been overhauling the Vatican since he got in. So far he has said that atheists will enter heaven as long as they do good works. He stated Jesus is just a man and prays to the Father. Uh, he is a co-mediator with the mother between God and man. He's also stated that the Big Bang Theory is relevant and possibly true, probably true. This is their statements made during the Mass and other ceremonies historically. said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High.
believe in the Pope because he believes in peace. And my definition of peace is accepting all religion. Accepting all religion. So it was really amazing because now I'm 31 years old and I never thought about becoming Catholic. And I'm not sure if, it was, if it's going to happen, of course, but only already the thought of it. This is a pope that struck such a huge chord among so many people in such a short time. But many do now expect him to get down to business and start tackling the very sensitive issues of reform and cleanup of the church. They hope that his humility and simplicity champions of popery could offer earthly ties and human interests dead to the claims of natural affections, reason and conscious holy silence. They knew no rule, no tie, but that of their order and no duty but to extend its power. There was no crime too great for them to commit, no deception too base for them to practice, no disguise too difficult for them to assume. Vowed to perpetual poverty and humility, it was their studied aim to secure wealth and power to be developed to the overthrow of Protestantism and the reestablishment of the papal supremacy. When appearing as members of their order, they wore a garb of sanctity, but under the blameless exterior, the most criminal and deadly purposes were often concealed. It was a fundamental principle of the order that the end justifies the means. By this code, lying, theft, perjury, assassination were not only pardonable, but commendable when they served the interests of the church. In the Power of the Jesuits by Fulip Miller and this book, The Jesuit, their spiritual doctrine and practice, we get a, 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 a history of the Jesuit order. We find that Inigo, the father of the order, was born in the Valley of Loyola, Loyola in northern Spain. Here he was born to a wealthy family. There today is a tremendous monastery to the Jesuits and a magnificent chapel illustrating how much they honored this man and the wealth of that order. Ignatius had been a member of this occult intellectual society and threw him in the jail there at the Inquisition. Upon his release, he's made his way to Salamanca, to the great university there, but again he was brought under suspicion of being an Illuminist, and he was thrown in the Inquisition again. Now, upon being released, he made his way to the great University of Paris in France, and there he gathered intelligent young men around him, brought them under the control of the power of his mind, and these became the basis of his society. Not too far from the university, they dedicated themselves to the new order of the Jesuits there in Montmartre. Today there's a tremendous chapel on Montmartre, one of the most magnificent chapels that we saw while we were in Europe. And it's dedicated to the destruction of democracy and liberty in the world. Ignatius from there made his way to Rome, and in time, he was accepted by the Pope. From that time, Rome was the center of this new satanic system, the Jesuit order. This is the Chiesa del Gesù in Rome, and entering into it, we get some idea of the wealth and the power of the Society of Jesus. There, a death mask of Loyola was made into a picture. We get a view of what he looked like. But the altars and the artwork are the ancient Baroque style, and it's a magnificent structure showing that the wealth of the nations at one time flowed into this order. These men, with their mind over the control of their emotions, were sent out into the world. But they also made their way out into the world of the pagans to win them to the new pagan Christianity. One of the first was St. Francis Xavier. The Pope claimed that this man had been given the gift of tongues, and as he went out he certainly learned scores and scores of languages in India and Asia and Japan and became a master of that whole province in the Jesuit system. The Jesuits were given tremendous power. At first, there was only 60 of them allowed, but in time, they were given full control of the church. Yea, they were given power to excommunicate all who would hinder or do not aid the society, to confer orders, preach and minister sacraments, to change their general, to, to change their general, to absolve heretics as well as imprison the excommunicate to exercise episcopal functions, to confirm, exercise, dispense, etc., to disguise themselves, to carry movable altars, give plenary indulgence, to live exempt, free from secular power, taxes, as well as juris jurisdiction, authority, sentence, and command of any other ordinary delegate, judge, magistrate, from any search. Folks, it illustrates that the church and society gave the Jesuit absolute control in this world, total free from all law. Father Matteo Ricci, 
illustrates the tremendous power of the Jesuit to infiltrate other religions and cultures. He became in every way a Chinese and in time infiltrated the court of the emperor in China. These Jesuits could read and learn the language and the religion better than the people, become the teachers of the people, and then insinuate Roman Catholicism, eventually opening up these magnificent courts to the Catholic missionaries. They entered into the primitive and poor areas of the world and thousands of pagans were gathered into the Catholic Church through these men. But they had a secret way of doing it. In the book Fire Jesuits we read, they allowed their proselyte Christians to commit idolatry by a subtle evasion, that of enjoining themselves, enjoining them to hide under their cloaks an image of Jesus Christ, to which they teach them by mental reservation to direct those public adorations which they rendered to the idol. The Jesuits infiltrated the other orders. They took over the head and the control of the Inquisition from the Dominicans. They turned it into a tremendous engine, a terrible power that wiped out thousands and millions of people. In Gary's doctrines of the Jesuits, we read it was Loyola himself who procured the erection of the Inquisition in Portugal. It was at the hands of the Jesuits that millions of people suffered the most horrible deaths Terrible suffering that goes beyond our imagination today. But these people did not realize that as they were persecuting these people, as they were torturing their flesh and causing every nerve in the body to scream in pain, they were causing the sufferings of Jesus Christ himself in his people. In Fox's Book of Martyrs and other books, it tells about the tremendous campaigns that raged against those who had fled into the mountains to have religious freedom. In time, all of the Albigensian race in southern Fran France were completely genocide exterminated from the earth. Not one was left. And the Walden Seas in northern Italy were exterminated to the place where there was only a few thousand left. And they had made their way over the Alps to Geneva. The record of history has been rewritten, folks, by the Roman Catholic religion. The Jesuits became the controllers of history. And thus, the record of millions of faithful souls is not available to us. The spirit of prophecy tells us that that record is written in heaven. The church, every time she wanted to evangelize or infiltrate another area of the world, set up schools or colleges there in Rome. This became the origin of the Pontifical Gregorian University. Its purpose is for, for the subversion of the world. They sent up houses of the Jesuits and magnificent schools which gave some indication of the tremendous wealth of this order. Europe was being covered by the Jesuits. In the Ignatian fireworks we read, or we notice on the back page it shows the Pope heating the fire that burned London in the 17th century. And it shows Jesuits under the control of the Pope starting fires in every country of the world. These Jesuits believed diabolical and witchcraft doctrines. At the heart of that order was occult teaching. From a Jesuit creed by John Battista Poza, he says, I believe in two gods, one is son, father, and mother metaphorically according to a temporal generation. The other, metaphorically, mother and father, according to a temporal generation. And what is consequent here, too, that the common term mother-father may be equally attributed to God and the Blessed Virgin as if they were both hermaphrodites, sexually male and female. This is raw pagan teaching in the raw sense of the word. In the book, again, the fiery Jesuits, they uh, affirm that the diligence of an expert conjurer in diabolical arts may well be thought worthy of a reward, and that a fortune teller is not obliged to restitution if he hath consulted the devil, nor to confession, though he hath expressly invoked the devil, and that it is lawful to consult a conjurer. It was the Jesuits who became the masters of astrology in the Dark Ages. They led out in the schools of teaching astrology in the Vatican. In Guri's Doctrine of the Jesuits, this also is available in the library here at PUC, we learn the secret of how the Jesuits became the masters of the confessional. They could excuse sin by subtle evasion. And because of it, the wealthy powers of the earth beat a path to the Jesuit confessional. They learned the secrets of state. They sent this to the head of their order. And through it, they were able to manipulate the emperors and the rulers of the world.